Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity. I will be presenting my outcomes of various surgical approaches to strabismus and congenital fibrosis of extraocular muscles. My co-authors are Dr. Deepti Joshi and Dr. Kaya Krishna Prasad sir. We have no financial disclosures and all consents were taken from patients to display data and their pictures. So why this study? This study was done because there are various forms of CFUM which are basically congenital cranial disinnervation disorders. And it is a primarily neurologic uh, disturbance from brain stem or cranial nerve development causing a secondary muscle fibrosis. So it becomes very challenging to treat. You cannot, you can never give a complete satisfactory 100% guaranteed result to a CFEM patient. That is where the experience of these surgeries and rare cases comes in so that you can provide a good quality of life. You always have to do a strabismus correction before tosis surgery and it is it always has unpredictable outcome our purpose was to evaluate outcomes of these strabismus surgeries in the cases that presented to our tertiary eye care hospital so cfum is like eye in a straight jacket you have to push and pull from everywhere to correct the eye our study methods were a combined retrospective and prospective study between uh, cases presenting between 2021 and 2023 a complete ophthalmological examination was done. Neuroimaging was done only in cases of associated neurological systemic anomalies. So in total, we recruited nine cases of CFEM and recession procedures were mainly performed as per the need of case in one or two stages. Our inclusion criteria were ptosis and hypotropia since birth, a positive force tuction test, uh, both unilateral and bilateral cases were allowed in the study. Exclusion criteria were if the cases were FDT negative as if no restriction any previous ptosis surgery, any acquired ptosis or Marcus Gunjowing ptosis or any other ocular surface disease or orbital anomaly which, which is restricting the eye. This was a surgical technique carefully hooking the muscles. As you can see the muscle is so much fibrous and posteriorly insert inserted in these cases. Careful suturing and cutting. Then FDT was done along every step to ensure that the eye is free. And then a hangback recession was done to uh, avoid complications like scleral perforation for large recessions, some of our, one of our patients. So total nine cases, six males and three females were operated in the study. Seven cases were hereditary and two were sporadic. Mean age was 12.3 years because in our clinic we have an age limit of 14 to 15 years. Then all cases, we received all bilateral cases, we did not receive any unilateral cases. Eight exotropias were there with hypertropia, ptosis and chin up AHP. One, only one case of esotropia with hypertropia, ptosis and chin up AHP. Seven cases underwent single stage surgery and two cases required two stage procedures. Only one sporadic case had associated neurological anomaly for which MRI was done. So this is the outline of our nine cases that we did. As you can see, mostly it is large angle exotropia with large angle hypotropia. So I'll just highlight a few important outcomes. So only one case, in one case we did not tackle the exotropia but only the hypotropia and we had to give crutch classes to clear the visual axis in this case. Then in one case of esotropia we had to do a periosteal fixation of lateral rectus to bring the eye into the uh, alignment. As you can see the ptosis cleared in most of the cases but three cases had to be given crutch classes for clearing the visual axis and only one case underwent frontalis link surgery to correct the ptosis. The maximum correction was we, uh, achieved was in case of periosteal fixation of the lateral rectus in the esotropia case. Also a good correction could be achieved in case of where we did large hangback recessions in the last two cases. So these were our surgical plans. This is one of the, this is a clinical profile of one of our uh, best corrected cases. As you can see preoperatively there is a large chin up head posture. Uh, large hypotropia and exotropia. On table, we, des we desired to achieve a overcorrection so that at 45 days post-operatively, this was the status of the child and he was maintaining a clear visual axis with minimal chin-up head posture at day 45. Our primary outcome showed that mean post-operative angle of hypotropia was 13.7 PD with high statistically significant difference before and after the surgery. Mean residual exotropia was 18.1 uh, prism diopters. Secondary outcomes for ptosis showed that mean post-operative mean uh, reflex uh, MRD1 was 1.3 uh, with standard deviation of 0.8 mm. And ptosis improved in 5 out of 9 patients, that is 55% with the uh, strabismus surgery alone. 
three patients required crutch glasses while only one patient had undergone a frontalis link surgery. Stents of a study, are we had a larger sample size as compared to other uh, uh, surgeries. There was no genetic testing done for our surgery. We compared our study with the two famously uh, published studies, one with the So I would like to conclude that uh, large hangback recessions are very important in case of congenital fibrosis of extraocular muscles. And you always have to do a stage procedure. You have to cross hurdle by hurdle to reach the uh, conclusion of this. Uh, Thank you. Were they hangback or hemi-hangback? So ma'am, all were hangbacks. Uh, and uh, how long have you seen the post-operatively? So uh, the first case that we recruited was in 2021. So uh, the last follow-up for that case was six months back. That was one and a half years. And the last case that we saw was two months of the latest follow-up. And are you seeing that the correction is coming down with time? Because yes, definitely, ma'am. Because on table, we were satisfied with the results. But eventually, the eye comes into a resting position, which is somewhere in between the original and our on table uh, corrections. So definitely, I would suggest that on table achieve as much of over correction as possible, because the eye eventually will go back because of all the fibrosis and push and pull around the eyeball. Inferior rectus in general tends to creep up. So yes, hemi hangback is better to have at least some sphere so you would prevent it going all the way. The other question I had is, I'm assuming there was no belt in these patients. No, no, ma'am. So the patient with frontalis sling, was there any exposure? We did under correction of the frontalis sling. We just cleared the visual axis okay. because the child had a large chin up head posture. Okay. So we just cleared the visual axis and we are maintaining the patient on nightly uh, ointments, nightly okay. gels. Adjustable suture in uh, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. The first uh, reference study that I showed, they had done adjustable suture, but our age group is 9 to 14 years. Okay. And to uh, counsel the patients that the child might, we might have to put the child again under general anesthesia or the, it will be painful for the child to adjust. So our age group, we couldn't, cannot do uh, adjustable surgery. Thank you. Thank you so much.